All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to make a start on the Tamiya 45th anniversary Porsche. It's using the TA02SW chassis with some factory hop ups, so it should be a good build. Now, this kit isn't ideal for the first time builder, so I'm going to assume anyone following along has built a Tamiya or two already and is familiar with some of the basics. Right. On the first pages, we have the standard info on what's required to finish the kit. It basically comes down to needing a radio, ESC, and a battery for the electronics, some paint and glue, and a fairly typical set of tools. The one thing worth mentioning though, if you're coming from another kit manufacturer, is the screws have a JIS head, not Phillips. If you are using a Phillips driver, you'll find you'll struggle getting some of the tighter screws done up without slipping. If you can, do get a set of JIS bits or drivers. On the second page, we have the neat warning cartoons and a couple of hookup guides for the electronics. And now for the main event, the start of the build. Thankfully, this kit is divided into sections that match the metal parts bags. So for the first section, we only need bag A. Some Tamiya kits, you end up with all the bags open, which does get a bit messy. Also, technically step one tells us to put the battery on charge, but unless you've got a really slow charger, you might as well wait until it's needed, especially if you're going to use a LiPo. Okay, inside bag A we have some screw pins for the suspension arms. There's also a couple of shafts for the gears to run on. There's a couple of bags with some various small fixings, washers and other bits. Then we have the small Allen key, the fibre motor plate, and parts for the CVDs for the axles. A rare thing for a Tamiya kit, a full set of bearings. This bag also has all the parts for the ball diff. Special washers, pressure plates, and many, many tiny balls. And lastly, we have the tools bag. There's some anti-wear grease, thread lock paste, special ball diff grease, some generic brown grease, and of course the ubiquitous cross wrench. As usual, I'm going to pour all the parts from the bags into some pudding pots. It makes the parts far easier to find and keeps them fairly safe from rolling away. Some of the parts we'll need right away for the ball diff in step two, so we'll keep those ones out. OK, next we'll unpack the ball diff bag and lay out all the bits so they're ready to go. And I think we can call this the official start of step two. So here we go. Step two, the ball diff. We need two thrust washers, the chunky step screw with a hex head, a large thrust washer, a small thrust washer, three five millimeter disc springs, which are essentially washers, but they're slightly cone shaped two 4mm disc springs, the balls, eight of the 3mm ones and six of the 1 16th inch ones, and we'll keep those in the bags for now so they don't get lost. We need pressure plates A and B, and the pressure plate cap. Lastly, we need the rear drive cup with the pin from one of the clear plastic boxes. For plastic, we need the rear diff gear, and there's G4, the ball cage for the small balls. But I didn't notice that right away though, so we'll grab that in a minute when it's needed. All right, so we can get at the balls to transfer them into the holes. We need a small tray to keep them safe. One of the lids of the plastic parts boxes works pretty well. It's a bit big, but the balls won't get lost, which is the main thing. We'll also need the diff grease so it's ready to go. The assembly of this diff needs to be just right. All the parts need to be assembled correctly, or it simply won't work as it should. Now I'm going to lay out the parts in the order of assembly, matching with the diagram. From top to bottom, we have the pressure plate B, a thrust washer, diff gear, another thrust washer, and pressure plate A. Right, first we'll take pressure plate A and apply a little bit of ball diff grease where the thrust washer sits, spreading it out with a cocktail stick. You don't need a whole lot of grease, and of course any excess will just get squeezed out when we tighten the diff at the end anyway. Next, a thrust washer goes on. Now, make sure the rounded side is facing up and away from the pressure plate. Add a little bit more grease to the face of the thrust washer, then we can offer up the gear. We want the gear so the side with the large holes for the balls is face up, so we can insert the balls. If it's the other way up, the holes are going to be too small. Now for the fun bit. We need to transfer the large balls from the tray into the diff. 
The easiest way is to add a little bit of grease on the end of the small Allen key, pick up a ball and pop it into one of the holes in the gear. This makes it nice and straightforward and it also has the benefit of making sure all the balls get a little bit of grease during assembly. Next we take pressure plate B and just like the other one add a little bit of grease where the thrust washer sits. Then we add the thrust washer, again making sure the rounded side is away from the plate and add some more grease. Pressure plate B now drops into the diff gear so the washer sits on the balls. It's going to be a bit sketchy until the drive cup goes in though. So we're going to add a little bit of grease around the splines, then pop it into the splined hole in pressure plate B so it lines up all the parts. It's going to be a bit wobbly still, but it should be stable enough to continue the assembly. Next we have the stack of parts on the right hand diagram. We need the G4 plastic ball cage here, so we'll clip that from the parts tree and add it to the parts. So just like before, we'll lay out all the bits in the order we need them. So from bottom to the top, we have two 4mm disc rings, the small thrust washer, the cage with the balls fitted, the large thrust washer, three 5mm disc springs, the step screw, and lastly the pressure plate cap. Right, with the diff gear flipped over so it sat on the drive cup, we can start by dropping in the two small disc springs. Keep in mind that it's absolutely critical with these and the larger ones that they go in the right way. There's a little diagram that shows which way up to fit them. If one goes in upside down, they're not going to act as springs and the tension won't be correct, making the diff slip, causing damage. So triple check and make sure you've got them right. Next is the small thrust washer with a little bit of grease on the faces. And now we have the ball cage with all the small balls. Now the same technique works using a bit of grease and the allen key. Just take extra care as these balls really are easy to lose. Also, a pair of tweezers is handy to hold a cage as it's far too small to hold with your fingers. With all the balls in, we can carefully drop the cage into the diff and gently make sure it's sat nice and flat against the washer. Next, a small washer goes in after getting a coat of grease, followed by the three 5mm disc springs. Again, make absolutely sure they're all going in the right way up. To hold all this lot together, we now need to screw in the step screw. Remember, there's lots of bits to get lined up, so don't just go crazy and try and tighten it up all the way. We need to slot the Allen key into the drive cup so we can stop it turning, then start threading in the screw. Gently tighten it until it starts to feel like you're just starting to compress the springs. Then carefully turn the gear against the drive cup. You'll most likely find some of the washers will find their position and it will free up the screw. Keep going until turning the gear no longer frees anything up, then you can tighten up the screw all the way. Now this diff is non-adjustable, so we need to tighten the screw all the way until it reaches the end of the threads. Having said that, it might just be possible to add a shim to loosen the diff a little, but it's really not designed to be adjustable. It's very much a fit and forget setup. When done, you should be able to hold the gear in one hand and with the allen key slotted into the drive cup, you should be able to spin the internals of the diff. It'll be fairly stiff and might feel a little bit grainy, but importantly, it should be consistent and not catch or get stuck. If so, that's the diff complete and ready to fit. Step 3, the rear gear case. We need four 3x10 self-tappers, two 1150 bearings, B4 the diff cover, B7 the rear diff case, and the diff. Right, first we need to drop the diff into the open end of the gear case. It shouldn't really matter, but as the diff has a large lump on one side, we'll make sure it's the same way around as the diagram, just in case. Then we slide a bearing into the slots on either side of the diff, and we offer up the diff cover. It might need a bit of a jiggle to get it all the way down. The bearings might just get a bit stuck on the sides of the diff. Once the diff cover is fully seated, install the four screws so they're bottomed out, plus a little bit extra. And well, there we go. One gear case ready for the motor. 
but we're going to wait until next time for that as I'm running out of time to make this video to be ready to go live on Sunday. That ball diff did take a little while to get through. It's quite the first step. Right, as always then, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!